in today's video, we are looking at Newton's first and second law. Sir Isaac Newton was a guy. He was a guy with pretty questionable morals by all accounts. But he did come up with a few very fundamental physics laws. And you need to worry about three of them. Today we're looking at Newton's first law and Newton's second law, loving the originality of those two names. So let's start with his first. A body will remain at rest or moving at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a resultant force. Okay, now let's do an example to see what this actually means. So let's take something first at rest. For example, a book on a table. What are the forces acting on that book? We have the weight acting downwards and the reaction force acting upwards. Those forces are equal in size and opposite in direction, so they are balanced. This means there is no resultant force acting on this book. So, by Newton's first law, it will remain at rest. Well, yeah. Okay, what about something moving at a constant velocity? Let's imagine you have a car going along a straight road at a constant speed. What are the forces acting on the car? Some kind of thrust force from the engine and then some frictional forces, including some air resistance. If the thrust is equal and opposite to those frictional forces, so that there's no resultant force, then the car will continue at 20 metres per second, or at a constant velocity. This law has a strange implication. I want you to imagine throwing a ball in the middle of outer space. Forget the obvious complications of actually doing that. Once the ball had left your hand, there'd be no push force on the ball anymore. Since we're in a vacuum, there's no air resistance or resistive forces. And imagining we're away from all other planets, there's no weight acting on the ball either. So there are no forces acting on the ball. So there is no resultant force acting on the ball. So whatever the speed the ball left your hand at, it will continue on that speed forever and ever and ever. Pretty weird. Okay, that's enough of Newton's first law. Now let's look at Newton's second law. And this law is all to do with if there is a resultant force acting on the body. It can be summed up in the famous equation, F is equal to M times A. Resultant force in Newton's, mass in kilograms, acceleration in meters per second squared. Again, let's see some examples. If you have a frictionless surface and you pull on a box with a force of five Newtons, box is two kilograms, what happens to the box? Okay, since there are no frictional forces, the resultant force on that box is the five Newtons. That resultant force will cause the box to accelerate. And I can find the size of that acceleration using F equals M times A. Force, five Newtons, equals the mass of my box, two kilograms, multiplied by acceleration A. So A is equal to five, divided by two is 2.5, meters per second squared. Okay, let's make it a little bit more difficult. Let's imagine you have a car on a road. It has a thrust force of 3,000 newtons and a frictional force of 1,000 newtons. The mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. What is the car's acceleration? Please be careful. The F in your equation is the resultant force. So before you use the equation, you need to find out what that resultant force is. This picture, I've got 3,000 minus 1,000, gives me a resultant force of 2,000 newtons. F equals MA, 2,000 equals 1,000 times A, therefore A is two meters per second squared. Okay, if you found that useful, please do like and subscribe. Download the notes for the definitions of those laws and all the worked examples. Thanks for watching.